Hey everybody, welcome back to Race of History. Today we're going to get into a video about, it's called Why Denmark and Sweden Love, Hate Each Other. Um, this is something I've picked up on in the Discord, in my comments, on all different sorts of videos. There is a relationship between Swedes and Danes that I absolutely did not know existed until I started this channel. So, I'm going to get into a video that is explaining the relationship, basically. So, I'm excited to hear what he talks about. Let's get into it. This is Denmark. This is Sweden. Denmark and Sweden are seen as the cool dudes of the world, giving the world something to step on and weirdly named DIY furniture. These two Nordic countries may look very friendly towards each other on the outside, but deep down there is an underlying intense rivalry. Why? The short answer is historical beefs. Their story kinda began with the Vikings, well known for raiding the crap out of everyone, and also establishing trade routes across Europe. This early history is what I'm really interested in. I know they're on opposite sides for the Great Northern War, they're on opposite sides for... The Napoleonic War, I believe, isn't Denmark on the side of France and Sweden is... Obviously, Sweden gets Bernadotte and then comes back and actually fights against France. I'm pretty sure that's the way that that lines up. So, that later history, I know at least somewhat, you know, how it shakes out. This early history and the kind of start of the rivalry is what I'm curious about. In general, the Danish Vikings sailed west saying hello to England, establishing the Dane law in northern England, contributing to the north-south divide in England today. The descendants of the Vikings in France later invaded England and all around Europe, providing new dynastic rulers across the continent. The Swedish Vikings sailed east, making contacts with the Slavs, Byzantines, Hazars, and the Muslim world. Depending on your perspective, Either those Swedes created the Kievan Rus and kick-started the history of Belarus, Russia, and Ukraine, or that the Kievan Rus originated from Slavic people entirely. Yeah, that's one of the things that I've been doing a decent amount of digging into, is what historians think about the Kievan Rus, and not that their formation was all Vikings, but if it was an intermixing of Slavs and Vikings from these Viking outposts as they moved east and then southeast. The Vikings also became famous muscles for the Byzantine emperors. As you can see, Danish and Swedish people had a huge impact in Europe from their very beginnings. When they got Christianized, they established their own kingdoms and began officially fighting each other like nobody's business. You cannot take the Viking out of them. Denmark expanded into the Baltics, but later sold it to some German dudes. Sweden got the same idea of territorial expansion, and expanded gradually to the Åland Islands and the coastal regions of Finland. During the 14th century, Denmark had a huge beef with the Hanseatic League, because the German merchants really wanted those cash from trading. To counter the influence of German domination in the Baltic region, the Nordic countries joined together to form the Kalmar Union. In theory, the countries remained as three separate sovereign states under a common monarch. But in practice, the Kalmar Union was dominated by Denmark. Unsurprisingly, the Swedes were not happy being bossed around by some Danish dudes, and decided to kick the Danes out of Stockholm, making Sweden independent. Yeah, and as far as I know, once they gain their independence, that's when they start to they they start to kind of beef up, right? As far as like a power in the region. And you can imagine once you get your you know, once you're independent, once you get your feet under you and once you start to beef up, if you have a country right next to you that's dominated you for a while, historically, that country should probably look out. After Sweden gained independence, the balance of power shifted. Sweden became the new big bully of the Nordic region, replacing Denmark. Being the king of the north was not enough for Sweden, 
so Sweden decided to become one of the great powers of Europe. After Sweden left the Kalmar Union, Denmark and Norway were still together, but not together together, a friend zone relationship for <laughs> centuries to come. Sweden and Denmark continue to fight each other. Sweden took Scania from Denmark, and never return it. This is why at first glance it looks weird that the capital city of Denmark, Copenhagen, is situated at the easternmost bits of the country today. It absolutely does. That's a great point. Especially with the historical context. You look at the Danish capital and you're like, why in the hell is it so close to Sweden? That's why. It's because it, it wasn't. It wasn't right on the edge of the country. It was a little more centered in the past. It used to be at the center of Denmark. Yeah. During the 17th century, Denmark and Sweden tried doing some colonization. Really? It ain't much, but it's honest work. Let's see. They've got a Caribbean island. Tip of India. West coast of Africa. Where we've got Africa again. And then in the U.S. Really? I did not know that. I mean, I guess I assumed that they had some colonization because everybody had some colonization. But I, I wouldn't have even been able to guess where where it was that's that's interesting and it's interesting that they both went to the west coast of africa um did denmark or sweden participate in the slave trade i'm i'm just curious um you know i've been talking about the at least from a, a couple of videos ago talking about kind of how that how that shook out and how the world kind of moved away from it or Britain kind of forced the world to move away from it but um, I'm just curious what the what the stance of the two countries since they both went to the western coast of Africa during the Great Northern War Denmark sided against Sweden at first Sweden was successful beating up Denmark and its allies yeah, and hilariously, I talked about this during the Great Northern War series. I feel like every time Sweden got pushed back into a corner, their like go-to reaction was to turn around and just stop out Denmark. Like it it was like no matter what was going on, where the conflict was was coming from or anything like that, as soon as they got pushed into a corner, they were like, "Well, it's about that time." And would just turn around and go go back to, to fight in Denmark. But then, Sweden had a brilliant idea of invading Russia. Unsurprisingly, it <laughs> failed, and Sweden declined soon after. The balance of power thus shifted once again. Russia became the new big bully of the Baltic region, replacing Sweden. During the Napoleonic Wars, Denmark and Sweden found themselves at opposing sides. Denmark was forced to stick with France, whilst Sweden fought France whenever it can afford to. After the Napoleonic Wars, Denmark, being on the loser's side, had to give up Norway to Sweden. During the 19th century, Denmark and Sweden became friendly towards each other, like two grown-ups who stopped fighting each other like they used to during their younger days. I think, I think what happens here is you have this shift of... European powers who there there starts to be this trajectory of like major major European like wars and I think the the basically I think some of the smaller countries who had participated in those historical European wars by the time you get to the 181900s a lot of those countries are getting to the point where they're like, eh, we don't really want to do this. The The countries that are now fighting are behemoths. They have huge amounts of manufacturing and huge economies and huge armies. And 
you see some of the smaller countries that were historically involved in those European wars kind of start to take a step back and say, like, it's really not in our best interest to to go be involved in this or get pulled into picking a side or anything like that. And so I think that's kind of what, what happens, not just for Sweden or Denmark, but for a lot of the kind of smaller European countries. As they were two small dudes navigating through the European shark tanks filled with bunch of big bullies, it was in their best interests to help each other. During World War I, both Denmark and Sweden remained neutral, although Sweden did have a crush on Germany. <laughs> During World War II, both countries again declared neutrality. However, Denmark was unlucky as Germany decided to roll over Denmark anyway, to chase off those pesky Brits from Norway. Sweden, feared for its own survival, decided to help both the Allies and the Axis powers, pushing the limits of the definition of neutrality. Sweden helped the Germans by supplying iron, and allowed German troops to pass through. Sweden also shared military intelligence with the Allies, and allowed the Allies to use Swedish air bases in later part of the war. Yeah, um, none of that is neutral. <laughs> Literally none of that is neutral. It's been brought up on Discord how Swedish neutrality is at the very least overplayed and at, at most is potentially a total myth. But none of this use use of air bases, allowing armies to, to march through, like none of that is neutral. Literally none of it. Now, I understand the position of Sweden. They are not in a good geographical spot, right? Um, the Soviets seem incredibly interested on expansion. The Germans obviously are interested in expansion. You're you're not in a great spot. I mean, you're just you're really not. And so, are you nice to the Germans in hopes that that will keep the Soviets from coming over there? Or do you, you know, you're just, you're, you're not in a great spot. So I get why they're tentatively playing kind of all sides here, but the word for that is definitely not neutral. I don't, I'm not sure what exactly it is off the top of my head, but it's not neutral. Pro gamer move right there. And thus Sweden <laughs> avoided being occupied by either sides during the cold war. Denmark joined NATO. Sweden publicly maintained neutrality, but unofficially kept strong ties with NATO countries. And built nukes. They built nukes too. Because Russia is scary. Denmark and Sweden later joined the European Union, but could not be bothered to use its currency. And here we are today. Denmark and Sweden are currently one of the most developed countries in the world, excelling in science and technology, education, manufacturing, and social welfare. Their long-time rivalry is now manifested in football matches, and constantly joking about each other whenever they have the chance. The Danes are seen as the Latins of Scandinavia, whilst the Swedes are seen as the Prussians of the North. The Danes think the Swedes are easily offended, serious, and too politically correct, whilst the Swedes think the Danes are too hedonistic, blunt, and too politically incorrect. The Danes say they have the best sausage and beer, and being the fun guy of the Nordic region. The Swedes view Danes as sort of a hybrid between Nordic and Dutch people, and reckon the Danes talk like they have stuffed potato in their mouths. <laughs> the Danes love German cars, whilst the Swedes love their very own Volvo cars. Both Danes and Swedes love chilling, Hooger for the Danes and Fakar for the Swedes. Sweden admires Denmark for its amazing actors, whilst Denmark admires Sweden for its more advanced economy and technology. Both Danes and Swedes see the Norwegians as too wealthy for their own good, who have nothing better to do than to watch slow TV. They also made sure they voted for each other in Eurovision, and support Finland's obsession with heavy metal. When you visit Denmark or Sweden, Please do not assume they are the same people just because they look similar on the outside. Denmark and Sweden literally fought each other for centuries just to ensure their country's survival as a distinct entity. 
Danish and Swedish people can sure be proud of their country's glorious achievements, history, and unique cultural heritage. Will this friendly rivalry between Denmark and Sweden continue in the future? Most likely, because the top dog of the Nordic region has always been up for grabs. Sorry Estonia. Thanks for watching. Okay, so that was why Denmark and Sweden love hate each other. I'm interested what everybody from the the region thinks about this. It was a pretty interesting video and the graphics were pretty funny, but really I'm curious what what all of you think. So put in the comments down below. Uh also I'll put the Discord link down there if you want to join the Discord. A ton of it is well, a ton of it is people from the Scandinavian region, so you'll feel right at home there. But as always, like, comment, subscribe, help me keep building the channel, and I'll see you all next time.